Well, I hope you have enough room in your dumpster for all those RTX 4090s I know you have on your shelf because yes, they're about to look like hot garbage compared to the RTX 5090, which could be coming sooner than I originally thought. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so yes, the RTX 4090 is still going to be a great graphics card, but it is definitely going to pale in comparison to this RTX 5090 or Titan, whatever you want to call it as. We just got a ton of information on this graphics card, and honestly, it is going to make the RTX 4090, I think, look like it's not only one generation old, but multiple generations old, as it's looking like the 5090 could potentially be and I know we hear this like every single time but yes once again the biggest leap ever can you believe it but this time I think it actually might be true because these leak specs are looking insane now this all started because well we actually did just get a bunch of official information on the blackwell architecture from nvidia although this has to do with their ai stuff all that data center stuff so i'm not going to talk about that too much i will have a link in the description below if you want to take a look at it as it is honestly a huge jump over what they previously had in the data center but it did actually give us some new information about their gaming cards and a ton of leakers started flooding all over Twitter as they do, starting to release more information about these GPUs, and there was already a ton to begin with, so yeah, we did get some information from a couple of really reputable leakers in my opinion. I know one of them for sure definitely does have inside information and is 100% reputable, and that is AGF. This guy over on Twitter dropped a ton of stuff. He was saying, apparently, quote, I can't say too much right now, but gen-to-gen -gen performance uplift is the biggest ever. And below that, somebody actually asked him a question, which I think is a good one. I mean, come on, how could this be the case? I mean, I'm just kind of paraphrasing here. When the RTX 4090 was such a large leap, and that required multiple node jumps, whereas this time, we're not quite getting that. The RTX 5090 is not going to be on a substantially more technologically superior node when compared to the node that the RTX 4090 was created on. And he did actually respond to that and said that, quote, another factor to consider is that Blackwell will fight both RDNA 4 and RDNA 5 during its lifespan. So decisions will be different this round. It's a chess game. And then, of course, Cop87 Kimi, who also has gotten a ton of stuff right about NVIDIA in the past, had his fair share to say about the RTX 50 series. He was saying that, quote, GB202 will use the same process node as GB100. And again, we just got a bunch of information about that 100 GPU, which is the GPU being used in the data center. And apparently, it's going to be using N4P. It is a performance-oriented improvement over the previous process node being used on the RTX 4090. And apparently, according to Cop87 Kimi, it could also offer up to 30% higher density as well, meaning they can pack 30% more, oh my god, into the same area and run it at higher clock speeds. And that's not even accounting for all the architectural gains that we're going to be seeing. So as you can see, there's been a ton of information being posted online, and that is just the tip of the iceberg that we went over. There's a ton more. I'm going to have links in the description below once again. But let's go ahead and take all this information that's been getting leaked and put it together in one simple slide for you guys so as not to waste your time with senseless rambling, as I know, yes, you can actually indeed get enough of that. So let's take a look here. Here's everything we know about Blackwell so far. When it comes to the flagship GPU, whether you want to call it the 5090 or the Titan or the Super Mega Ultra Epic Edition, I don't care. You can call it whatever you want. Yes, we're talking about, according to the leaks, 50% more cores, 20 to 30% higher clock speeds. In fact, I think some people were even quoting more than that, but let's be a little bit realistic here, guys, and say probably 3 to 3.2 gigahertz, which would put you 
around that mark. And then Red Gaming Tech was actually saying potentially up to 2.5 times the ray tracing performance. Now, whether or not that's going to be true, we'll see. As I did, I believe, see something that had to do with AI performance being two and a half times better on the Blackwell 100 GPU that was just released. So potentially there's some miscommunication with the AI GPU versus the gaming GPU. We'll see. But of course, if it's two and a half times better AI, that could potentially translate into ray tracing performance if they beefed up the RT cores as much as the AI performance. Now, also, we have potentially up to a 512 bit memory bus. Now, the last time anybody used a 512 bit bus was a long time ago. It takes up a lot of die space. It would make for a massive GPU. So whether or not this will actually happen, we'll see. But Cop 87 Kimi, again, has gotten a ton of stuff right. And he seems to be pretty adamant that that 512 bit bus is coming. So you better make room. It's going to be big if that's true. Also, potentially, if we do get the 512-bit bus, we will be talking about likely 78% more bandwidth on the RTX 5090 versus the RTX 4090, as it will likely at that point be using up to 32 gigabytes of 28 gigabits per second GDDR7, again, if it is a 512-bit bus version. And also we're gonna be talking about major architecture tweaks. Everybody's been saying this. They've also all been saying that there's gonna be a major cache redesign, I believe, or some sort of memory design changes in some way, shape, or form. Also, it sounds like huge AI performance increases. GPU, again, is gonna be using 4NP. I believe I called it N4P earlier. I guess it's 4NP. Hey, shoot me, you know, oops. It, <laughs> quote, gen-to-gen -gen performance uplift is the biggest ever once again from AGF. Oh yeah, and then the release date should be quarter four of 2024 for the Titan and or 5090, whereas the other GPUs will likely launch starting in 2025. And then finally, if we are indeed gonna be getting a 512-bit bus GPU, you can bet your cheeks that that thing is gonna cost probably around $2,500. Could they push $3,000? Sure, they could. I don't think they will, but they could. And if NVIDIA can do something, well, you better bend over because they just might. Now, just because the RTX 50 Titan might come in at $2,500, that does not mean the entire lineup is gonna be ludicrously expensive. Do I expect some cards to be expensive? Yes, I think we'll get a Titan at 2,500. I think we'll get a probably 5090 at 1,800 with a slightly cut down. I believe there was an article about like a 400 148 bit bus so maybe something like that could happen and then you could see like a 384 bit maybe 5080 ti or something like that at fourteen hundred dollars and then you'll see the rtx 5080 at 999 i don't think they're going to push over 999 again in fact maybe even 899 on the 5080 as i think they learned their lesson they cannot charge an exorbitant amount for an 80 class card it needs to be somewhat affordable for the <laughs> for the average consumer. I mean, $900 is already ridiculous. They cannot be pushing over $1,000 on these mainstream cards. Yes, they're still enthusiasts, in my opinion, at that price. But I think all the other cards should probably stay at relatively the same price, maybe even in some cases actually dropping in prices. There's gonna be a lot of pressure coming from both Intel's well as AMD in that roughly $200 to $600 range. There's gonna be a lot, a lot of GPUs in there at really, really good prices. So I don't think Nvidia can get too cocky around those spots. They're gonna have to keep the prices good probably cutting them. So do expect if you are looking for a reasonable card to get something at probably a good price and an excellent performance increase over the current RTX 40 series. But if you want the best of the best, if this Titan really does exist, yes, it is going to cost a lot of money. And yeah, you might want to be looking at like a 5080 or maybe a 5080 Ti this time around if you were previously an RTX 4090 buyer, unless you're really willing to step up to that 1800 to maybe 2000 plus dollar price range to get a 5090 or Titan equivalent card. But in any case, it does sound like it's gonna be an absolutely insane, bonkers, crazy type of card here, guys. I'm gonna lose it if we really get a card this fast and they are definitely gonna be excellent for gaming, ray tracing and content creation and a go-to card for those of you out there who are looking to use a GPU for business purposes or if you just want 
the best of the best. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the RTX 50 Titan is really gonna happen? Or do you think that a 512-bit bus is just too much, it's too expensive, it's too big? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.